Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's March 5th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, another northeastern state ramps up for registration and confiscation. And in Canada, who needs a law? Mounties declare certain rifles illegal over the objections of elected officials. Then, can the government evict you from your own home simply because you're not on the grid? All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Our top story tonight, showdown. Maryland to target over 100,000 citizens with gun confiscation. This by Paul Joseph Watson. The new law would link gun registry with a criminal database with new troopers set to be hired to enforce door-to-door -door visits of illegal gun owners. Let's stop right there. Illegal gun owners, door-to-door -door visits, everything they said would not happen. We're not going to registrate to confiscate, but that's exactly what's happening here. Proof positive that registration does lead to confiscation in the United States of America. Because we saw Hurricane Katrina, they said, oh, that was some anomaly that will never happen again. But now... They know where the guns are. Even if they don't know where the guns are, they want to go door to door. If you're suspected of having a gun, they want to come knock on your door and see, hey, Mr. Jones, Mr. Smith, Mr. Johnson, do you have a gun inside your residence? Can we take a look? New legislation is being considered by the Maryland House of Delegates that would allow police to run checks of the state's gun registry against a criminal database at least twice a year at the cost of $300 thousand dollars so there it is right there for everybody who was skeptical there it is even if you were on the fence if you were one of the people who really wanted to quote reasonable gun uh, restrictions this is a wake-up call for you all right this isn't time for i told you souls if you're on the fence if you're on the wrong side of this debate you need to get on the right side of this debate you see what they're trying to do we see the mayors against the legal guns they want registration confiscation Maryland wants registration confiscation. Connecticut wants registration confiscation. And we need to get rid of these laws, get rid of this legislation, so we end up, don't end up, might I say, like Canada. Because in Canada, we have Mounties overriding civilian rule to arbitrarily ban and confiscate firearms. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police are acting on their own authority to arbitrarily reclassify, ban, and ultimately confiscate certain rifles. The RCMP made good on its past threats and turned tens of thousands of Canadians into criminals overnight when they reclassified the Swiss Arms classic green carbine. And it's a lot like what's going on here in the States, because they say, we don't like your rifle because it has a pistol grip on it, or we don't like that your rifle can have more than 10 rounds in the magazine, or you know whatever their deal is at the time. We don't like that your rifle has a, a sliding stock on it. Whatever, any reason they can do to take away your firearms, that's what they're doing. They're doing it in Canada, and now they're doing it here in the United States because we see people like Feinstein, all these other gun grabbers, saying that if your rifle has more than one or two military characteristics, we're going to call it an assault rifle. Most of these people can't even tell you what an assault rifle is because these laws are written by a lot of people. They go see the movies or they go see some uh, so see something on CNN in the Middle East where guys are using fully automatic AK-47s. I challenge people to go to a big box store here in the United States of America and find a fully automatic AK-47. You're not going to find it. You may find it occasionally here or there where people trade it in, but most of your guns aren't fully automatic, and that's what people are afraid of. So registration does lead to confiscation. If you live in Canada, God be with you. If you live up in the northeastern states, if you live in uh, Maryland, if you live in Connecticut, do what you can to fight these, uh, these gun confiscation measures. Tell them, come and take it. I'm not turning in my guns. And so we turn from them taking away your Second Amendment rights to them taking away your sovereignty in general. Woman fights for sovereignty after judge declares living off the grid illegal. Robin Speranis has been fighting the city council since November when a code enforcement officer, officer showed up at her home and tried to evict her from her own property for not using public utilities. She challenges that relying on nature for her needs is a personal choice and that she isn't in violation of anything. And I cannot agree more with, uh, with Ms. Robin here because she says, hey, I have my own solar power. I collect my rainwater. If that's what I want to do, isn't that my business? Yes, that is your business, miss. They have no reason to come up to your house if you're not using their resources to begin with. If you have your solar power, you're off the grid, you're not using the smart meters, why do they have to come to your house? If you're not using the water utilities, if a pipe busts, it doesn't matter to you, you know, if somebody pipe bursts down the street because you got your own stuff. But they still want to come to your house and mess with you. And this is what's very important for people to realize. You preppers or people who live maybe out in the sticks or whatever, 
just because you're off the grid doesn't mean that they won't try to come and mess with you. And this is a proof positive example of this. You still have to be active in your communities. You still have to go to the city council meetings. You still have to fight with whoever you got to fight with to get on the right side of the right people to make sure that you can be left alone in your sovereignty. And this is just a shining example of that. Now, we move to a very serious topic now, and not to say that the uh, previous articles weren't serious, but it's a very sad topic. Surgeon babies born without brains in Washington state. As reported by CNN, a nurse in the area, Sarah Barron, was the first to report on a particularly horrifying condition in which babies are born without much of their brains and skull. Over a three-year period, there were 23 cases concentrated in three southern Washington counties, Yakima, Benton, and Franklin. Barron, however, says she wonders if the state authorities did not find anything because they didn't look hard enough at all possible causes. Now, this is referring to the investigation. She also went on to state that the health department has not spoken to any of the parents of the babies who had the birth defects, which is very troubling to me. Could you think about if enough people get food poisoning in a county or a particular city, they'll go to these people and say, hey, what did you eat or where did you go? And they say, oh, I went to uh, Bob's Fish Shack. And then they go talk to Bob. And, you know, they may find out that maybe he's not preparing his fish the right way and then handle the situation from there. But when you have uh, some horrific birth defects, why would you not want to go talk to the parents and find out if they were eating a certain thing or if they lived in a certain area? Well, I guess they do live in a certain area. What's going on in these three counties? People need to investigate this and find out. And this is how you make your make your mark in journalism. People ask me all the time, how do you get on the show? How can I, you know, do more to help people? Find out who these people were. Go talk to them. You know, be polite and just say, hey, you mind if I ask you a few questions? Post online and you may end up on the show. Nine out of ten Texas voters want Obamacare repealed and welfare recipients drug tested. Well, that says it all right there. The article on Infowars.com has many other polls, including uh, things such as expanding CHL locations, the places where you can actually take your, uh, your concealed weapon with you when you're throughout the state of Texas. So it says it all right there. People don't want Obamacare here in the state of Texas, but yet it's still being crammed down our throats. People want drug, uh, want welfare recipients drug tested, but once again, uh, they're slow moving on that. So we'll see how things develop. And a development I don't want to see, anti-leaks legislation coming within weeks, NSA chief. The head of the National Security Agency, General Keith Alexander, alluded to unspecified legislation on media leaks as being forthcoming, potentially within weeks. During remarks at a cybersecurity panel on Tuesday, this was at Georgetown University. And I believe it. Uh, the hardest part for me to believe about this story is that they didn't try to ram through this, uh, these legislations sooner because, you know, they hate these leaks. They hate uh, people like Edward Snowden. And this just falls in line with the whole big narrative. The FCC, you know, the FCC is trying to come down and go to your newsroom, tell you what to report, how to report it. Why didn't you report on this story? Why didn't you say that this way? Why didn't you say it that way? Meanwhile, the head of the FCC even came out and said, hey, I don't think this is a good idea, but the Obama administration wants it anyway. And I'm sure many other administrations, if they could have got away with this, they would have done it as well. But this is the censorship of your media. That's why the alternative media is so important. And we'll be talking about the alternative media in just a little bit when we go on to our guest. But uh, this is what you have to do. If you don't want to you know, be involved in this, the people out there, all the people in the newsrooms around America, just say no. Like a drug slogan, just say no. Like, no, you're not coming in here. You're not telling me what to do. This is the United States of America. I still have a First Amendment right. And let's talk about your rights, your right to privacy. Google Glassware is banned from San Francisco Somar Bar. And there's a sign there. It says, our patrons have expressed concern with being recorded while enjoying themselves at the Willows. Kindly remove before entering. And there's the picture of the Google Glass. And as a private establishment, it is their right to say, we don't want you to come in here you know, with these recording devices on your face. But the thing that always gets me about surveillance, if you're wearing Google Glass or you have a camcorder or you're running around with your iPhone snapping pictures and people kind of look at you like, hey man, what, what are you doing? Why are you recording me? I was like, bro, I'm not even recording you. You're just standing in the way of that uh, monument or whatever I'm trying to take a picture of. But when the government does it, as we saw in our last article, people really don't care. People don't care that uh, Wired Magazine has these high-ranking chiefs on there saying that we'll spy on you through your dishwasher. Go look that up. Wired Magazine will spy on you through your dishwasher. They don't care that they're tapping your phone, that they can spy on you through your laptop, that they can spy on you through your smart TV. You can go find that article on CNN. I believe there's actually a video that accompanies that. They don't care when the government spies on them when they walk down the street and they have all these halo cameras everywhere or they have secret cameras or whatever placed anywhere. 
that's all peachy keen. As long as you can't see somebody spy on you or recording you, that's okay. Nobody seems to care about that. But the minute somebody gets in your face with a camera, then everybody freaks all out. I was like, why don't you freak out when they're recording you in your house over your Xbox? That does, I just can't understand that. You're probably doing some stuff that you don't want people to see, even if it's not illegal. And now we'll end on something that she didn't want anybody to see, and it very much was illegal. That's Miss Lois Lerner. She had some words to say, or very few words to say, to Mr. Izza. On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Ladies and gentlemen, seeking uh, the truth is the obligation of this committee. I can see no point in going further. I have no expectation that Ms. Lerner will cooperate with this committee, and therefore we chairman, chairman, chairman. So you can go before the House Oversight Committee and plead the fifth, but in the city of Austin, Texas, if you fail to identify after jaywalking, you're going to jail. Isn't this a great country that we live in? So that brings us to our break, but stay tuned because right after this, Alex Jones will be giving us a breakdown of the false flag, the sniper attacks in Kiev, and also I'll be talking to David West, the director of the TSA Dick Johnson video. You don't want to miss that as well. So stop by prisonplanet.tv, get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can see our, our loving mayor right there giving us all the finger about the fluoride. You can see all that and so much more on prisonplanet.tv. So stay tuned right after this break for more special reports. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. And welcome back. Earlier today on the Alex Jones radio show, Alex was breaking down the sniper situation in Kiev, how the snipers are targeting both police and protesters alike. Details of leaked phone call between EU Foreign Affairs Chief Catherine Ashton and Estonian Foreign Minister Umas Pate suggests that the U.S.-backed opposition was responsible for hiring snipers who gunned down protesters in Kiev and not the deposed government of Viktor... How do you pronounce that? Yanukovych? Am I pronouncing that right, guys? Yanukovych? I am pronouncing it right. As the media widely claimed. <coughs> Continuing here. During the phone call, Pate tells Ashton that evidence presented to him by a doctor who treated victims of the sniper attacks clearly indicates both police and protesters were being shot at by the same people. Yes, to create the illusion.